All right, welcome back to Let's Go Online. I'm going to do the profit here. I sort of want to get that done before we go, and if I remember right. What? That may actually be, um, I don't know if I screwed something up there, because he started talking at the end of last episode. It's kind of pointing down. He asked me to seek out a place called the Harborage, where he has taken refuge. All right, now, where is the Harborage exactly? The harbor is way over here. I could just go there. I it's, strangely it's pointing right here. So I, I don't know. You know what I do? I'm gonna go there. If it, it ends up being nothing and something screwed up with this quest, then I'm just gonna edit the whole freaking thing out. But um, hopefully, we actually need to get out of the freaking city anyway. You know, I gotta start gathering some some stuff like these things. Alchemy reagents, and uh, I will be putting points into uh, so we can see them a little bit better because you can do that with the, some of the skills on the crafting tree. Things already got me uh, wasting my time up too much here. I didn't really want to do. I think this is going to take you someplace, um, if this works. Yeah, these torch bugs and, you, and the, the butterflies you see around will give you insect parts, which are for fishing, um, in case you're wondering. Alright, so we found the harborage. Apparently this quest did correct itself. That's good. I think this is going to be a little bit of a, a thing here, if I'm remembering right, from the other, the other side. I hear familiar footfalls. Yeah. Come closer, Vestage. Yeah, how you doing? It's a prophet. Long time no see. Oh, wait, I gotta look at your bookshelf. Thank you. Welcome to the Harborage, Vestage. This is as comfortable a home as an old dried up husk like myself could hope for. Alright, well, how did you find it? Despite my blindness, nay, because of it, my other senses seem to have heightened. This place had the right smell about it. Uh, so when you first appeared to me in Cold Harbor, you spoke of my destiny. Indeed, but let us not get ahead of ourselves. Without an understanding of where we are bound, every road will get us nowhere. Before we truly understand our destination, we must speak of the past. Okay. Is your lesson? Of a sort. I invite you to enter my mind and walk with me through visions of the past that you might understand the events that brought us to this time, this moment. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Enter my mind, Vestige, and walk with me through the shadows of past events. Something interesting here. <laughs> I'm gonna rob you. Okay, yeah. I, this is the Follow same. Follow me, Vestige. And learn of the events that precipitated our current crisis. This one is going to be heavily story oriented. It's not going to be much My of part of the story began when I awoke on the steps of the Abbey of the Moth Priests with no memory of my prior life. The Moth Priests took pity upon me and brought me into their fold. I was weak and near death. It was there I first set eyes upon the Elder Scrolls and devoted my life to their study. And there's one now. The scrolls allowed me to glimpse the very fabric of reality, but each profound insight dimmed my vision and eventually left me permanently blinded to the light of the world. Alright, so... The prophecies of the Elder Scrolls are a fluid, living thing. They are not fixed. At many points throughout history, the actions of heroic mortals have rewritten them. Really? Well, you know, before I go on, I do remember hearing something about this statement, and specifically the Elder Scrolls that. See, now the events of the Elder Scrolls Online take place before the previous Elder Scrolls game, and actually there's a lot of people that are big into lore. And I've watched some of those lore videos, some shoddy cast in other, in other places that 
they're implying that a lot of the stuff that happens in here really is not it's, it's, they're wondering whether it's considered to be canon or not or whether this is really happening because a lot of it doesn't measure up with some of the timelines and stuff of the Elder Scrolls game that everyone else seems to be familiar with like Elder Scrolls 3, 4, 5 and that kind of thing the, the, the storylines and the books and the lore from that so what he's saying here is important because the Elder Scrolls is saying history is kind of fluid and so some of the, some of the events that happen here during this time period that we're involved in it's like it's kind of making it so that it's okay that we're we're, we're affecting things in the timeline of the Elder Scrolls universe is what I'm saying so just to put that in perspective for some of you people maybe I mean I would suggest if you want to know more about Elder Scrolls lore to you know look it up on the internet there's there's a lot of sites out there that that tackle that as well as the the YouTube channel Shoddycast I think it is so I I've watched a lot of their Elder Scrolls related videos and it was pretty good I mean a lot of them help me understand some of the stuff that's going on without having to go back and read hundreds and hundreds of books and stuff so sorry for you know dragging this out but um, sometimes I have to f I feel like I have to give you guys a bit of, a couple bits and tidbits of information for those of you that don't know about this stuff but most of you probably already know and you're telling me just get get on with it already all right fine I said well okay what does this have to do with me I only know that you are important vestige the scrolls reveal to me that your destiny is intertwined with that of the five companions. All right, so who are the five companions? The five companions were a band of adventurers who sought out an ancient artifact called the Amulet of Kings. They hoped to use this artifact to persuade Akatosh, the Dragon God, to accept their leader as one of the Dragonborn. Interesting. Dragonborn? The Dragonborn are mortals destined for greatness, with the blood of the dragons in their veins. It is said that only a true dragonborn could ignite the eternal dragon fires in the Imperial City. Interesting. So, um, who was this leader? Baron Aquilarius, the son of Calobian Duke, who led a rebellion against the Emperor Leovic and took the crown himself. Alas, Varon was not truly a dragonborn, as those who sit upon the ruby throne must be, in accordance with tradition. Hmm. All right, go on. You have already heard enough babbling from this old blind fool. It is time you met the five companions yourself and witnessed their fate. All right, well, let's do it. The first companion, Lyris Titanborn, daughter of giants, was the mightiest warrior in the service of the Emperor. Next, Abner Farn. A powerful sorcerer and Grand Chancellor to the Imperial Elder Council. The Red Guard Swordmaster, Sai Sahan, leader of the Imperial Dragon Guard. The Imperial Emperor, Baron Aquilarius, who attempted to light the dragon fires and failed. And finally, Manamarco, the traitor, the King of Worms, a powerful necromancer. And your execution. Yeah. So Man of Marco was the one that killed us. Awesome. Yeah. A lot of familiar story elements here from Elder Scrolls. Particularly Elder Scrolls 4 and 5. These were the five companions who set out from the Imperial City on an epic quest to recover the lost amulet of kings. All right, so um, how could the Amulet of Kings turn, Ver turn Varen into one of the Dragonborn? Many Marco convinced Varen that the Amulet could be used to perform a ritual that would rekindle the Dragonfires. He claimed this would please Akatosh and entice him to adopt Varen as one of the Dragonborn. All right, so why did Varen want to be Dragonborn? Where By tradition, only the Dragonborn can lay claim to the Ruby Throne and rule as the one true Emperor by divine right. Varen conquered Cyrodiil and took the throne, but unless he became Dragonborn, he feared he'd always be thought of as a pretender. Alright, well, you know, I want to go into all this stuff, to be honest with you. Um, tell me about Manamarco. Manamarco the traitor, the great enemy, the most powerful necromancer this world has ever known. His worm cult infiltrates and corrupts every corner of Tamriel. 
It was he who convinced Varen to perform the ritual you are about to witness. Hmm. All right. Tell me about the other companions. Each of the five companions were chosen for their skill and courage, and each was given a special role to perform in the party. Who would you like to know more about? Well, we know about Lyris, but we'll ask anyway. You've already met Lyris. She's a Nord warrior from the frozen lands of Skyrim to the north. And it is said that her family lineage contains the blood of giants. Varen chose her for her strength and her loyalty to be his personal bodyguard. All right, Sai Sahan. Sai Sahan came from a long line of Red Guard Swordmaster nobles. He was the leader of the Dragon Guard, the security detail of Varen and the Elder Council. While Lyris was Varen's bodyguard, Sai was charged with protecting the entire group. And, um, Abner Thar. The Thans are one of the most influential families in Cyrodiil. Abner, their patriarch, is the leader of the Elder Council, a powerful battle mage and a shrewd politician. With his council, Varen was able to seize the Imperial throne years before. All right, well, this is going to take me back to the previous... Uh... Manamarco yes, the yes, traitor. Yes. All right, well, the what happened enemy, when they performed the, the most Shut powerful up. necromancy? Disaster, war, and pestilence. A world brought to its knees. Now watch and see how one man's arrogance brought about the greatest threat our world has ever known. Oh, okay. So the emperor to be was arrogant in trying to become a dragonborn, which you have to be born with. As those of you that played Skyrim know, you can't just like become it. You are it. Well, sort of. There it is. <laughs> The dragon fire brazier. Manimarco, you certain this will work? It will work, my liege. The amulet of kings will rekindle the dragon fires and ensure your rightful place as emperor. You have my word. It better work, Manimarco, or you'll find your neck at the business end of my axe. My lord, I wonder if you'd muzzle your half giant pet. She really is annoying. Enough, both of you. We are here to ensure my lord's rightful claim to the ruby throne. Abner, begin the ritual. I have a destiny to fulfill. By the lighting of the dragon fires, I claim my rightful lineage. By the fires of creation, let me be reborn. By the will of Akatosh, I proclaim myself dragonborn. Baron Aquilarius, you are no heir to Alessia. You will pay for your sacrilege. The veil between Tamriel and Oblivion tears and splits asunder. What's happening? The sky is opening up. This is bad. This is very bad. Ah! This, this isn't supposed to happen. What's the meaning of this? Manny Marco, what have you done? Gullible fools! The veil between Oblivion and this world has been torn. My master, Moloch Baal, is free to claim Tamriel for his own. Akatosh, forgive me! Have mercy on our souls! Huh. All right. The ritual tore the veil between Nairn and Oblivion allowing Manamarco to begin stealing the souls his master needed to power the Dark Anchors and initiate the Plane Mount. All right, so what went wrong? Akatosh gave Alessia the Amulet of Kings as a symbol of his covenant with Nern. So long as the amulet remained in the care of Alessia's heirs and the dragon fires remained lit, Tamriel would be protected from the Daedra. What happened after that? Manamarco tricked Varen into breaking the covenant, and the veil between Oblivion and Nern was torn. The Elder Scrolls named this event the Soul Burst. It gave Molog Baal the opportunity to disconnect the souls of Nern from their hosts. Uh, okay, so what happened to the other companions? Varen was lost. In the chaos of the moment, Sai Sahan took the Amulet of Kings and fled. Leris was captured by Menemarko and delivered to Cold Harbor, the realm of Molog Baal. What about uh, Abner Tharn and Menemarko? Tharn remains Chancellor of the Elder Council, and his daughter Tribio rules as Empress Regent. 
but the true power remains in the hands of Manny Marco and his worm cult. All right, so how did you end up in Cold Harbor? When I discovered the truth about the five companions, I made subtle inquiries, but apparently not subtle enough. Manamaka got word of my interests and abducted me. He took me to Cold Harbor, where I remained a prisoner until you freed me. All right, so uh, they saw you as a threat then. The truth is always a threat to evil men. Manamaka feared I would reveal his treachery, and if knowledge of Nan's vulnerability were to become known, it could threaten his master's schemes. Molog Baal does not favor loose ends. Walk with me. All right. Do I have a choice? <laughs> Don't really. What a lovely place. Long ago was written, so long as the amulet of kings was borne by Alessia's heirs, Tamriel would be protected from the forces of oblivion. But the soul burst tore the veil between worlds and gave Molog Baal the opportunity he desired. Merlock Bowles' dark anchors pierce the torn veil and seek to draw Nern into the depths of Cold Harbor. These terrible engines of destruction have been appearing all throughout Tamriel. <laughs> if the Lord of Brutality and Ambition is successful, he will merge our world and his own in a terrible plain mill. Yeah, well, he will survive the ordeal. Those that do will be enslaved for all intent. Well, maybe it's Dagon sort of tried that in Oblivion. It's sort, of, it's sort of the same thing. Right. And so it falls to us, Vistage. We must stop Molog Bar and his dark anchors, or our world is doomed. Okay. But now history seems to have caught up with us. Shall we return to the harbor? Yes, I'm ready. As you say. Mr. Impy. No. <laughs> I no Hey Impy he came with us. That's good. You were a nice guy. You brought Mr. Impy with us too. And so it begins. The remainder of the story has yet to be written. It is your story now. Alright, well you give me a lot to think about. And there is so much to do. But know this. You will not walk this path alone. So what's our next move? We must grow in strength and in numbers. You will need more than the company of an old blind man to alter the course of history. We must assemble our own group of companions. The first you have already met. Yeah, Lyris. Lyris sacrificed her own freedom to allow us to escape. She remains a prisoner in Cold Harbor. I must determine her precise location if we are to mount a rescue. That will take time. So what should I do in the meantime? Minamako's agents leave a web of lies and deceit. They pit the races of Tamriel against one another and divert their attention from the real threat. Seek out these agents, wherever they can be found, and expose their lies. I'll do what I can. Forgive me. Bringing you to my mind seems to have taken Still quite a toll on me. I must rest. I will contact you when the time is right. Until then, walk in the light, Vistage. Yes. Awesome. All right. Well, I, let's see. Let's check this out, baby. First ring. Get that on. And a skill point. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see here. All right. Let's see here. We, we want to put in... Mm, Invest yourself as lightning to gain major resolve and increase your armor and spell resistance. That's interesting. We could just evolve this one. What would that give us? We have two choices here. I'm going to read the green stuff here. The green tax new effect would be explosion deals more damage. Or the killing blows restore magicka. Both very good. That would restore pretty much all the magicka you use in one of the one of the uses of it. Um, I'd rather take more damage. So we're going to up, upgrade that, and I'm going to end this episode too, since, um, yeah, we might as well just uh, kind of make these short, like I said before, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Hopefully I will move us along to the next, uh, whatever the next quest is I think we should do. Alright, so see you next time, folks. Adios.